Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what leads to all the trouble, is not the row, it's the making <laughs> <up>. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You're 61, John B. God bless yeah, you. 61. And you're grey. How are you coping with your age now? How do you feel about that? No problem at all. I find that being grey has tremendous advantages. Uh, I regard every grey hair as a stipe, the likes of which you'd see on a sergeant major. <laughs> it, it is as if to say that I have been there and back, you know. Yes. And I often felt that, that the most conciliatory of all colours is grey because where there's a row in progress, even a drunken row, the arrival, however late, of a distinguished-looking grey-haired man can have a very benign influence on the proceedings so? and often induce peace uh, between the warring factions. I also believe that a good touch of grey hair is the very same as a campaign medal. It means here we're dealing with a veteran, you know. <laughs> and I would take fellows with grey hair very <clears throat> seriously. I say at least he knows something, and there's, there's a bit in, in Julius Caesar when they say about Sinner the poet, you know, who's useless at everything else except writing poetry. They say, no, no, let us have him for his grey hairs. And remember what Shakespeare said in, in, in was it Hamlet? Those hairs thou hast, and their adoption tried, <laughs> <laughs> raffled them to thy pole with hoops of steel. <laughs> <laughs> to paraphrase something or other, yes, <laughs> indeed. I want you to read for me a piece out of your book now, The Power of Words, and it's about love and marriage. It's here on page, it's from Sive, isn't it? 73. Is it 73? Is it 73? Is it 73? I want you to read it for me because... Uh, 88, it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, telling us, would you somebody make up your mind? I haven't. I had it marked down here. Hold on. I'm normally very good about. Ah, yes. There you are. There you are. This is. This is. Yes. This is about love now. Well, this is love between two people. You see, who 